Do I say that often? Shall we? I say. Oh, you do. One of us does. <laughs> it should be said more often. Yeah, I'll just wonder why you're so wonderful. All right, programs to normal. It's definitely backwards because we have an area. Shade to the right because we're, we're still setting the track for speeders. We're still trying to set the speeders. So go to the right. And what percent is the 15? So it's going to come out. Oh, I see what you're saying now, Sandy. You said it's way too far to the right because it's closer to 1. It's 1.04. So it's right outside the first standard deviation is what you're going to be cutting off. So essentially, anybody below, anybody within the first standard deviation or below is not going to be speeding under the speed limit. So this guy right here becomes 1.04. All we've then got to do is convert that back to a speed limit. And that's just a matter of using the formula again, but reverse this. So you get 1.04 times 8, which is like 8. So like 79 miles an hour? Yeah, yeah. There we go. 79. Set it at 79 miles an hour. Now, don't, I wouldn't do that if I, was, if I was ODOT. Because what's going to happen if you set it at 79 or 80, what's then going to happen? I bet you the average shifts, right? I bet you then, woohoo, 80, and now we start averaging more than 71, right? And then the curves start chasing themselves. That's why Archie Briggs going from 25 to 30 scared me a little bit. I'm like, ooh, you're rewarding bad behavior, right? There's a reason that road is 25. It's freaking treacherous in bad weather. It's not great in good weather. And then you put ice on it and snow on it and people on it and deer on it and bikers crossing the path on the river trail. I mean, I'm going down there, literally, I was speeding down there yesterday, I was going 32, 33 down there, and at one point I'm like, slow down, dude, there's cinders everywhere. You're going to lay the bike down. Ian, yeah. So the history of that road is it didn't used to connect to Mount Washington. It didn't. So it was just 25 since residential. It was residential. It was connected to Mount Washington, and so much more traffic came through. Yeah. Where did it stop originally, do you remember? Oh, at the top. Oh, it just didn't it punch all the way end. through. Yeah, yeah it was dead. End. So it serviced those last couple houses. Which, some of which are very new, actually. So it probably yeah. stopped uh, maybe a quarter mile down, maybe something like you that. You see with this new uh, pavement. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, pick, I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll note that uh, I guess tomorrow when I go up. Because there's a bunch of new houses at the very tip top yeah. of it that even haven't been there in the past 10 years. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so if it's purely residential and it's dead end, you're not going to have the service traffic. I often think to myself, what a crazy road to build in Bend. It's north facing at the steepest part. It crosses the river, which means the bridge is going to freeze very rapidly because there's nothing under it. I mean, it's like, wow, how many ways can you build a road in the worst possible place? <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful bike ride. It's a beautiful bike ride. It really is, especially coming home. But my goodness, in inclement weather, that's, that road in particular, I love riding my bike in the winter because when the boom was happening back in like 06, 07, people would try driving their big loaded down trucks up that road early in the morning, loaded down with, with like, you know, lumber and stuff like that. And I'd pedal right through and they're spinning around. <laughs> And I kind of pedal around them and pedal up, pedal up, and I'm thinking, man, what an insane road to take a, a semi on, essentially. Because it's crazy. It's crazy steep in place. You guys actually analyzed it back in 105, back in the day. It's, it, it's ridiculous how steep that road is. In places. In some places, it goes downhill. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful road, except when the weather is not crystal perfect. Yes, Aaron? It's probably off topic, but why wouldn't ODOT or whoever reduce the speed on the sign and expectation of speeders so that they're traveling at the correct speed. So if it's 30, why not drop it down to 25, well, knowing they're already going to go 30? I'm guessing it's partially a political reason. This is my guess, and I have no idea if this is true or not. People, so many statistics grow out of anecdotal evidence. So we'll, we'll talk about this a lot in 244. How do research studies start? Because somebody thinks something does something. And then somebody else is like, you know what? Yeah, my uncle told me that, or blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden you get these like anecdotal evidence that becomes a sample that then might point to a change in something. Very, very surprising statistical results are often a result of that. Observations. Observations. You observe, you observe, and then you put it to the test. So for example, in 244 yesterday, uh, I checked the difference of cantilever brakes versus V-brakes on my cyclocross plane. Now, I am mean, anecdotally told that V-brakes work better than, than cantilever brakes, and my own personal experience is that they are. But I wanted to put it to a scientific test to see if that was just an anecdote or if that would hold up to scientific scrutiny, and that's where the tests come from. My guess is that speed limits on roads are as much due to perceived safety measures as it is to public opinion about what they should be. In other words, squeaky wheels get the grease. If enough people complain about that being 25 being too slow, then things change. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm saying that's my guess as to how certain things like that happen. Like people that go to city council meetings when things like this are discussed, 
are usually people that have a vested interest in having things changed. So that's when those get discussed. And people that don't care whether they change it or maybe think they should stay at 25, why would they go to a meeting to say, yes, keep it at 25? Like, you wouldn't go to a meeting to say that, but maybe you should if it's one of those things that's up for, that's up for contention, right, or up, up for change. But how would you know that? I don't know. That, I'm not saying it's, 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 a, it's a good use of time. Because you basically go to every meeting on the off chance something comes up that you don't want changed. I mean, did you say that out loud is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. But then I come back with by saying you shouldn't make a change like that at a meeting where there's only 10 people present. But yet that happens all the time behind closed doors in lots of places, right? I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm saying that's what might be happening. I don't know what governs feeling. I've seen cops on Archie Briggs measuring speeds. I love the fact that that flashing sign is now. That makes me exceptionally happy because those things I think work, especially in low light conditions, which is when you don't want to be speeding the most on a road like Archie Briggs. And you know what I've noticed too? And you've noticed this too? They flash when you're more than like five or 10 over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. That gets your attention. It's like a blue light too. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> Just, they're watching flash. They're watching. <laughs> I, it's, it, it goes back to, I think I've told you guys, the, 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 the genius of the vending machine that turns on when you walk by it, right? It's genius. It's genius for so many reasons. It gets your attention. And I'm ADD, flashing lights. Whoa! And when that thing flashes, that's how I knew I was speeding yesterday. It flashed. It changed as I went by. It wasn't on until I went by. I'm like, holy shit, 32. I mean, it wasn't flashing because I was going 10 over, but it was flashing because it came on when I went by it. That's brilliant because otherwise it blends into the background. On my light, on my bike, I keep a blinking red light on my tail post, not a steady red light. Why? I dare you not to see it. A steady red light's gonna go by like any other car. Right. This morning, I was pissing off, I could tell I was pissing off cars. I had my 1000 lumen light blinking. As I was riding westbound, it was making every sign on the street light up. And in the back of the mountains, I'm like, this is like the prettiest scene ever and the most annoying all at the same time. <laughs> but I challenge you not to see me coming at you, right? You wouldn't see me. Oh, there's Sean's pulling up your light. <laughs> What's that blinking light? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Don't see it anymore. I'm like a mock to a flame. What's that?